Good morning, my fellow yoga travelers. I'm mighty glad to be alive today, and I hope that you are too, as we continue to live, laugh, love, learn, linger, and live the life we love. I want to talk about the sacred canopy, one of the ancient ideas that almost all cultures shared. They each had their own version of some kind of covering, some kind of protection, some kind of order, some kind of cosmos that helped to give them shelter against chaos, against fragmentation, against disorientation of not knowing where they belong. And uh, once we realized as a human being that death is inevitable, it radically changes our taken for granted way of looking at things. Everything becomes dubious. And so in order to build a bulwark against the terror of not knowing when you're going to die or what happens after you die. Indigenous people built what is called plausibility structures that reinforce their religious vision, which re-legitimizes re the plausibility structure. A plausibility structure is a way of looking at the world that you can't prove is true but everybody buys into it, everybody has faith in it, and therefore it makes your society go. And it also legitimates your sense of individual self by connecting you to community. So there's a sense of belonging. And it provides you an identification that reflects back to you who you are, and it confers a certain kind of status on you as a member of the group which means you find value and meaning in your life by accepting their idea. And I don't try to glorify the past, whatever kind of golden age might have existed at different times. The truth is modernization is gonna, has made it already almost impossible to return to any kind of pre-industrial mindset. Ain't going to happen. Technology is moving forward. And we can't isolate ourselves the way things happened in the past. In fact, history is the increasing breaking of boundaries and hybridization of people as they mix all over the planet. Now, with secularization, which is taking the sacred out of life and thinking of things as only kind of worldly, and with pluralization in a country like ours, <coughs> where we're like a, a mishmash of different ethnicities and cultures, and with miniaturization, everything being made smaller and smaller into the microchip. And with democratization, the idea all over the world that people want to be free and have a state a statement in how their society looks. This has completely disrupted the way things were in the past. And of course, the United States, one of the birthing places of separating church and state, even though there's some people in our country who would like to be a theocracy, separating church and state, how, how smart that was. But what it did with the advance of science also is it demythologized everything. We exercised, we excised all supernatural elements out of religion. And this just left us with reality, which is pretty sacred in a certain way, but not compared to the way the ancients used to see it. So when you do that, and when you have the cessation of coercion, if you're separating church and state, no one's forcing you anymore through religious institutions or political rationales to have to believe anything. You're free to believe or not to believe. But because of that, it doesn't guarantee adherence to the old ways. In fact, so many of the institutions are in disarray because allegiance is, uh, is no longer mandatory. It's voluntary. And it's always less than certain. And because of that, all these bureaucracies are vying for their market share. Yeah. And so no one has a monopoly on reality definition anymore. And that's why we're a pluralistic society. I do believe we're evolving eventually historically to a global mindset. But as long as individuals prefer to have a sense of private religion, don't you tell me what to believe. I can believe or not believe as I see fit. We have to learn tolerance for all denominations. And unfortunately, we're not completely out of the woods yet when it comes to people who still think violence 
or war will ever bring peace or justice. So that is the challenge that we have ahead of ourselves. How do we find our cosmos, our order? And for me, of course, it's the realization that there's only one family, the human family, and only one home, the earth. And from that, we will find a way not to be fragmented, not to be disoriented, but to recognize ourselves and each other and work for the good of all until such time as we ideally reach the omega point.